same situation. Um, my name is Max Müller. Today I want to give you a short introduction to SSSD uh, with this uh, system security services demon. Uh, this sounds a bit strange, but um, I'm going to promise you it's easy like Sunday morning. So let's get started. All of you, uh, or I guess everyone who's using Linux, uh, has uh, configured authentication on the system. Um, there are different ways in the classic configuration for setting up authentication. The easiest way is uh, pass, weedy, and group configuration for local accounts. And um, if you have ever had, were, were in the situation where you had to connect to an LDAP server or Active Directory, like we were at the ETH where I'm working, um, you, know, you have to uh, configure Kerberos, Alda, and all the other stuff. Uh, the disadvantage of that kind of classic configuration is that there are quite many config files to observe, to keep track with, and up to date, and to know what to configure where to get a close and clean setup. So, uh, the next disadvantage we had uh, in our situ situation is that uh, within the classic configuration you got quite a cool caching. Um, some of you might heard of NSCD with this, the name service caching daemon, which is responsible for caching the account information from um, uh, remote uh, directory accounts locally. And we uh, experienced a lot of problems with NSCD, at, le at, least, when it's at least when it comes to a large number of uh, objects in the directory. We are talking about uh, 150,000 to 300,000 account objects in our uh, directory setup. Um, so after a while, NSCD simply crashed. Um, and we have to restart it and monitor uh, what was going wrong. Um, the next disadvantage is that you can't uh, log in lo uh, locally if you're offline. So you have to be connected to a directory service to connect to the directory service. That's what I mean with no offline authentication possible. So it was really time for some new wallpapers. I was glad that SSSD came up recently, uh, which was invented by Red Hat, and there is a team of two developers working at Red Hat, mainly Stephen Gallagher, who really does a great job in uh, introducing SSSD, and SSSD is meant to be a replacement of all the configuration options you currently have in your classic configuration. It simplifies the whole configuration to one file, which is etcssd.com. And if you take a look, the simple ssd.com uh, looks like that. You got a SSD, SSSD global configuration section uh, where you define domains and refer domain to domain settings. And here is just a simple domain setup uh, where you uh, where you got local authentication element. Uh, the advantage of this kind of setup is that you can stack, you can combine these domains. You can add additions. You can also configure local configuration in addition with LDAP configuration and Kerberos configuration. Yeah, as mentioned before, we were glad to have an NSCD replacement. The caching algorithm of SSSD is very good. Um, we never experienced any crashes on that, um, and <laughs> we were very glad to have something like offline authentication. So now you are possible to configure your laptop or a mobile computer to your uh, directory, pick it up off the network, take it home, and still be able to log on your machine using your uh, directory credentials. This is a really cool feature. Yeah, what do you got for uh, identity providers? We can configure these major identity providers uh, for uh, querying identity information. In our setup, we have uh, configured LDAP for um, identity querying using an Active Directory LDAP and even an open LDAP setup. Uh, it is possible to configure EPA as well as uh, to act as a proxy server to a local misconfiguration. What's, what's IP? Hmm? What is this IP? 
IPA it's uh, such a not a beer. Open, it's not a beer, no, it's <laughs> a free LDAP implementation or something like configuration interface. Okay. Um, we got several different authentication frameworks. Um, we got both. We got an LDAP uh, where passwords are also stored on the LDAP. And we got the Active Directory where we use Kerberos for our authentication. So we got a mixed setup with LDAP um, for identity and Kerberos for authentication. Uh, but you can as well use EPA for that uh, or the local PAM configuration files. So, uh, as uh, SSSD was invented by Red Hat, it's mainly included in the Red Hat distributions at the moment. Um, within WELL, or WELL 6, which is uh, available since a while, and even WELL 5.6, SSSD is already included, but in a quite low version. Uh, at the moment, version 1.2.x is included, and it still has some limitations. So if you are on the well setup, you, uh, you have to know that we got no net, no net group support working there yet. Um, we are planning to, or Red Hat is planning to um, push the latest version to the upcoming release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, which will mean the upcoming 5 version and 6.1. Um, but this, these are the limitations, or this is uh, one of the limitations we have. Another limitation which we uh, currently have in the, in the latest setup, which is 1.5.1, um, is that group quoting does not always work, but uh, this is something that is known uh, and will be fixed soon. So my intent uh, of this little talk, and yeah, because I got just a few minutes left or so, uh, if you want to carry up with some questions. Um, my intent is for you to give you an overview what SSSD is and to motivate you to try it if you're already using a Red Hat based system, which means Fedora or Red Hat. Uh, just uh, give it a try, take a look at it. It's quite easy to configure uh, and got uh, very good advantages uh, despite the classic setup. And um, if you're, for example, building packages for other distributions, um, it would be great uh, if someone would pick up the task and package SSSD, uh, for example, for Debian, Gen2, or any other distributions are welcome. Um, we want uh, to have SSSD in any major distribution soon. So if you can help there, just contact me. Uh, afterwards, you can find me at the Santos booth or at the Fedora booth. <coughs> Uh, and we can talk about packaging for other distributions. Also, if you're interested in um, advanced setup or want to take a look how uh, SSSD.com might look uh, if you've got Kerberos running, LDAP running, something like that, you can join me up, uh, talk to me, and I will show you an conf example, example configuration to, to let you know how it works. Okay, that's all for that short overview. Uh, I want to thank you for now. And if you get any further questions concerning SSD, we feel free to just ask. So we still do have some time with like 20 minutes left. Yeah. Okay, then we'll have really the fast. <laughs> you are very fast. If you have to say something more, just go ahead. That's all to be done with you. Let's see. Sure, I have a question. Yeah. So what, uh, can you talk a bit about some of the steps that we that, that a person should take if they want to think about migrating their configurations? Uh, you know, you talked about the old thing and the new thing, but yeah. what's the order to go in before to do it successfully? Um, I would suggest to take a look at the Fedora Hosted project of SSD, which contains some useful information and also contains a ticket and bug tracking system, so if you uh, uh, figure out any uh, bugs or one or two problems, you can just ask. You can also join up the mailing list, um, which is quite responsive. I'm mainly talking directly to the developer by, by ISC or mail, mailing list. And for a basic setup, SSSD ships very good documentation. Documentation is included in the Red Hat deployment guide. 
uh, which you will find on an enterprise Linux as well as uh, CentOS, uh, as it mirrors the documentation. And it got several man pages. It got one main page for the main configuration and the main page for Kerbos setup. It's SSSD underscore Kerb5 uh, main page and SSSD LDAP main page uh, with uh, quite a few examples explaining how to set them. It's really easy. In comparison with the classic setup, it's quite easy because you got all in one place. Uh, you got an overview uh, of your LDAP setting. You got an overview of your Kerberos settings. Um, I played around with a, with a several kind of setups. Uh, at the moment, I'm I'm using or well, I'm planning to use uh, Auto Discovery for KDCs uh, using DNS, secure DNS. And it was quite easy to configure in comparison with the classic set, which is not that hard. But um, I had heard of SSD before, and I was under the impression that it was actually Kerberos Demon as well. Is that a mistaken impression? Or? No, it's not, at the moment, uh, SSD is still a work in process, and this has to, uh, this has definitely to be mentioned. Um, we uh, rely on libraries uh, of LDAP as well as Kerberos workstation and client utilities. Um, so you, they have to be present. It's just an, a configuration framework. It does not replace the backend libraries, which is even not the intent of the project. Um, yeah, and uh, we are planning to put in, for example, WinBank support and. Yeah, but what, what I mean is, does it also do the server side implementation of Kerberos, or was that a mistaken impression? If it replaces or, or if Kerberos demons, does it do that or just only do the client side? No, it's just a client. Okay, that, so that was a mistaken yeah. impression. Thank you. Just a client. Do you have um, do you have any insight into how the internals of the data storage works? How does it store its state so that local authentication works? Um, there's a um, database, I'm not sure, or, or it's, uh, I think it's an SQLite database, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong on that. There's a database file located on the file system where the credential cache is stored, and the, uh, the, even the account information is stored in a separate database. Uh, but you can easily just delete that file and it will regenerate the cache on the next number waiting. So there is an outing number waiting. It depends on. Uh, at the moment, we got the problem that we got uh, we got quite a large number of objects, so we are not able to enumber weight them all. So I, at the moment, I disabled enumber waiting because it simply doesn't work. Uh, but that's something we thought about that uh, page numberation is possible. So uh, enumberation will happen in a few steps first. 10,000 objects and then the next 10,000 objects and so on. Um, if you don't use enumber waiting, uh, it uh, caches on querying. So if you got a query, it caches it, cache it in the local database. And um, what uh, we got uh, quite a lot of trouble with was uh, nested groups. Um, so if you got a group set up where in, within a group is another group and another group, <laughs> and that's what we have in our uh, implementation, um, we had a lot of trouble and still have. Um, but we are working on that. Um, and hopefully in one of the next mi uh, minor releases, we got that done. Okay, are then, sure. Yeah, um Considering the nested groups, will be able to handle the member output aggregate that you can have the record services update while you add people to groups. The nested groups. Mm, I didn't get the member off attribute. Does that sound familiar? No. Yeah, I know the member off attribute. No, it does not query. The member off attribute is not um, uh, uh, a standard of the, uh, the add-up definition. So that was something I was thinking of as well, <laughs> because it would be quite easier to use that. Um, but uh, the reason, that's to, and I talked to Stephen about that, but that's uh, the reason for it. He's not implementing that that way. He's just querying all groups and search is the user the member of the group at the moment. 
as member of is not listed in, uh, in, uh, in all directories. Active Directory does it, and it would be easier to use that attribute if you are an Active Directory. Maybe we can think about some distinguishment. So if the server dis detects some uh, Active Directory or valid member of attributes, it could uh, the client could then use the member of attributes to query. But member of attributes got the disadvantage that they virtually does not contain the nested groups. So you still have to query, you first have to query the member of attributes and still have to query that groups if there are any, any nested groups in that. Actually, it can. Ah, okay, but, but you do that on the server side. Yeah, but it's not possible in Active Directory as part. No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what we had. Okay. Yeah. Do you got any further questions? Or are there any packages here for other distributions than Fedora? Are you packaging or is there any package here? I'm also a Debian packager. Yeah, so you have to package it for Debian or any other one. Um, will things like one-time passwords, not to, well, they say UBT, no. be able to go through SSSD as well? Not at the moment. Maybe it's uh, a plan for future implementation, but definitely not. We are at the basics right now. <laughs> we, get, we are glad that we got a running setup, so <laughs> and it works well for the basic things. And I guess it will be extended over the next few months and years. OK. Any more questions? Yeah. Is it mainly a Red Hat project, or is it? Um, Red Hat is, uh, has hired the developers and is paying the developers of the project, uh, but it's a Fedora hosted uh, project, so it's completely open source as most Red Hat projects are, and uh, it's meant to be as a general project. It doesn't make sense that only one distribution includes it. And uh, just to make sure it's just it's really an ad advantage. You won't lose anything using SSSD. It's just make you feel better because it's easier to, to configure. So I uh, uh, I'm in a good mood that uh, some other distributions will pick pick that up soon as well. And I will do my best to help out if if there are any uh, uh, questions concerning packages uh, or packaging or other distributions. But I'm not that big deep in package, for example, so we need someone who is able to do that. And for OpenSUSE and Kit, we could just use the RPMs and rebuild them for OpenSUSE. And uh, from, from the Red Hat point, uh, point of view, we got a um, little configuration tool that's auth config which is available on Fedora and Red Hat systems mainly, and uh, which handles basic configuration tasks. So you can even use auth config to configure a simple SSSD setup. Uh, SSSD uh, works as a pump plugin, so you got just a line in the pump, and in the NS switch configuration, if you, you want to use that, sorry. Um, and uh, that's all. And. Uh, I guess any other distribution could handle that on their own way. For example, Ubuntu does not have that kind of configuration tool, but comes with a very good pre-configured PAM setup, which works up very well in most situations. I guess it came from Debian, so I'm not sure if it's a book in a boot in the invention. And uh, the PAM setup, yeah, that's Debian. That's Debian mm. thing, yeah. And um, what, uh, what it all also can do is handling excess restrictions. That is something that I don't have mentioned in my uh, little slide setup. Um, so uh, if you're currently working with an access conf or something like, like that, this could also be replaced with SSSD setup. So you can allow specific groups to log in on a specific service and within a domain and restrict all other domains for that group. Uh, I guess that kind of modular setup makes it really easy to uh, handle that kind of configuration files with a config management uh, system like, for example, uh, Puppet Isis. Maybe we can all also write a public ex extension for SSS. That shouldn't be that hard. And then you can just say, this node is in uh, this domain setup and it will automatically apply the configuration. 
Okay, another question then. Uh, I haven't personally tried it on OpenSUSE. Maybe I have to talk to some of the developers. Uh, if I try find him afterwards, I'm going to, to talk to him if we can make it happen in OpenSUSE. Um, I think I could even package it for OpenSUSE. So I, I'm a bit familiar with the build service. So It is so already in. So we are getting forward. Okay, then it's all for me for now. Thanks for listening to that short introduction. Mm -hmm. <laughs>